Um, thank you, uh, Last Count Corla. Uh, well, Minister, I think the manner that this debate has been organised is quite disgraceful. Uh, we've been handed a speech a few hours ago, and there's an attempt to steamroll through this to push it to a vote tomorrow before workers, their families, and the communities who depend on Aer Lingus can have any chance to find out about it, but more importantly, to object and to lobby their TDs, in particular Labour TDs. And this is a, an act of treachery by Fine Gael and by the Labour Party in selling off the last remaining shares in Aer Lingus. In particular, it's yet another broken promise we can notch down by the Labour Party, who seem to, their tactic seems to be to boycott debates now, in which they might be held to account in any way, shape or form. We go back to April 2006, when 75% of Aer Lingus was sold off by Fianna Fáil. And who was it who, who, in leaders' questions, jumped up and down only Pat Rabbit? And he said at the time that the Progressive Democrats has pushed Fianna Fáil so far to the right, it would be unthinkable, even a decade ago, that Fianna Fáil would have sold off the national airline in a country that has the strategic requirements of an island nation. So now it's the Labour Party that's been pushed so far to the right that it will go along with this proposal. Now we're hearing all these fake assurances about jobs and conditions, but according to Impact, one in four people in Aer Lingus could lose their job under this deal if IAG follow the traditional path that they've followed so far. And there hasn't been one word from you, Minister, about pensions. Did you get any assurances on that? Or have you anything to say about that? Now, let's remember these same assurances were given in 1997 when Team Aer Lingus, the maintenance company that Aer Lingus used to own, was sold off to another multinational giant. But what happened? By February 2009, that company had been closed down completely. With the loss of 1,300 jobs, the business was moved to Zurich in the Middle East, and the company was profitable with highly skilled workers, many of whom uh, live and worked in my own constituency, SR Technics. So why would Aer Lingus be any different in a few years' time? A Taoiseach and the Minister have come away from uh, Aer Lingus, not from IAG, but you say from the CEO of Aer Lingus, with a letter about employment rights. Um, and the CEO doesn't foresee a likelihood of either compulsory redundancy or non-direct employment. <laughs> I mean, are, are you for real? Is this as good as you get and you expect people to buy it? Aer Lingus is already moving to subcontract out and, and employ non-direct labour. It's, it's doing it on the Atlantic routes. I actually sent you a letter about it, Minister. I had a table for a question and you told me to toddle along to Aer Lingus, even though the government has a 25% share in Aer Lingus. Um, now, you, you mentioned today, and the Taoiseach repeated this, that you've got better assurances and control over the slots and over Aer Lingus now than you ever had. No, you haven't. The government just chose not to exert any control over Aer Lingus. There was a 25% share combined with the pilots and others. Actually, it was a very decisive influence. If you had a government that cared about a national airline, about a public enterprise and about workers' rights, so selling off the last vestige of control by the public over a strategic asset to a multinational shark is what is going on here today. And what else would they do only cut costs and operate in their own interests, not in the strategic interests of the people of this country? That's what multinationals do. You, you say that their preference is to utilise direct labour wherever efficient and effective. So when it's not effective, they won't do it. Um, and to avoid compulsory redundancies. Not, that's not ruling out compulsory redundancies, it says to try to avoid them. So um, there will be redundancies in Aer Lingus, uh, even voluntary first, but compulsory then, if necessary. And, you know, you expect us to think that that's fine. Suddenly you found a way to get multinationals to behave in a different way to what they normally behave in. That, that's amazing, Minister, because the record of IAG in taking over previously it is completely the opposite. Now, on page two of your speech, you point to the amazing contribution of Aer Lingus, to the importance of when it was established, etc. Minister, you should be seeking to buy more shares in Aer Lingus, to try to renationalise Aer Lingus, to, to, to right the wrong that Fianna Fáil did to, in 2006, to renationalise it because it is such an important company. It's the 19th largest indigenous company in this country. 
It employs 4,000 people directly, but obviously has other spin-off companies. The slots are uh, valued at 925 million by Deloitte, and it apparently has a net cash of 445 million. So if you could ditch your ideological aversion to public ownership, Minister, the taxpayer spends billions attracting companies like this to this country or supporting them with all sorts uh, through the IDA, Enterprise Ireland, Ireland, etc. And here we have an indigenous company with a recognised brand that's respected, that contributes to the exchequer and that's profitable, but yet it must be sold off. Now the pilots in Aer Lingus have made the situation quite clear. They've said Aer Lingus does not need IAG, IAG needs Aer Lingus because Aer Lingus has something that other airlines want and that is in particular the slots in Heathrow, as I said, valued at 925 million, but invaluable to this country for regional development as well. I mean, 25% of business in Shannon relies on Heathrow and 20% in Cork. Uh, in seven years, that control would be completely gone and seven years is not a very long time. We're a small, open economy in a globalised world. We need strategic, a strategic aviation bridge to the rest of the world. Now, the government can invest billions, it seems, of taxpayers' money in failed private banks for the last six or seven years to, to prop up failed private developers, failed private Quinn Group, the near collapse of the privatised Aircom, even a, a lottery company that isn't able to run a successful lottery. But yet, you can't invest in, and in trying to maintain a company like Aer Lingus, which is in profit. And the government is trying to pretend that Aer Lingus can survive without this deal. What are these threats and challenges? I haven't heard them outlined, which Aer Lingus can survive without the, allowing itself to be bought up by a shark. It has survived Ryanair, which is a company was set up with a lot of help from Aer Lingus, incidentally, which is conveniently forgotten. It has survived 9-11, and it has, has spawned other companies in the past. Now, the Labour Party thinks, and my final remarks will be this, that they can rush this through, uh, foist it as a fait accompli among the workers' communities of North Dublin, of Limerick, and of Cork, and, and other areas, and that people will somehow have forgiven and forgotten by the election next year. And can I assure the Labour Party that this is just the last nail in their coffin? And this will hasten their demise, in particular in those areas, and any attempt that they have to save face would be very futile, and their silence here today is deafening.